I think a lot of folks don't understand, like, you know, as we've done, you know, Bluebird and we've done Writers' Nights, you know, what it's really like, I mean, the reverence people have for songwriters in Nashville, because it's, you know, most people, a lot of people think that George Strait writes the songs or blah, 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 or most, a lot of, a lot of artists don't write their own songs. And, and they have these big, huge careers because of great, great songwriters. And, and I think what I always loved about Nashville was its reverence for the songwriters, and it's, and it's really amazing. I agree. And in fact, that's why the Bluebird, I think, is kind of the heart of the show. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the more we get back there, the better, because that, the Bluebird itself tells the story, that it all starts with a song. Mm -hmm. And there you see this guy. And I remember the first time I was there, I was quite literally blown away, because that you'd be sitting as close as I am to you, mm -hmm. and so close that when the foot tapped on the carpet, you could feel it right there. Right. And then he'd break into a song, whether it was, you know, Tony Arata playing the dance or, right. or something like that. Exactly. And, and it's something that it was uh, literally a part of your life and part of your family's life. And you realized more clearly than ever that it was written by a Nashville songwriter right. and that they would sit at that mic right there and they would play you that song as they wrote it. And, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> That that's that's really in a nutshell what our songs what yeah, our show's about. I think it was cool. I think the thing that intrigued me most. I mean, of course, you have this big music background, but playing Buddy Holly, you know, going straight to London. And this was right out of college, kind of, wasn't it? Wasn't yeah, it absolutely much? was. Well, the other that. thing is, is that I figured that I could play music on the <laughs> side while I did acting, but you can't really act on the side while you're doing music right, as well. Right. So. And I was hoping I'd be able to do both at the same time, but lo and behold, I went out there about a year and a half after I was in Los Angeles. Um, I wasn't really booking much work. I wasn't, my managers that I had somehow acquired didn't really know that much about me, so I had them over to my house and I was basically showing Perfect. off. I was showing them the who I was and what maybe I could do. And at some point I picked up a guitar, played a song or two. I swear it was like a week later, they called up and they said, There's, they're auditioning for the role of Buddy Holly in London. Are you interested in that? And I was like, yes. Yes. I was like, that's, that, yes. And so I went out there and I did every other small role in the show till I finally became one of the guys playing Buddy Holly. And it was for, I was there almost two years in London. And I wow. toured for almost eight months in the United States. I played in front of the Queen and Princess Diana and the Princes. And wow. I was at the White House for uh, the first President Bush and the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And um, wow. It was an unbelievable, it was almost like a bookend to this job. That was the first big job where I got to do music and acting, and now here I am all these years later in the favorite job of my whole life, getting to do music and acting at the same time. <laughs> it's just crazy, man. Yeah.